issues so threads are evolving to be more and more complex every day right <clears throat> so level of vulnerabilities are threads there is and roughly we say there is four level first is for hardware that means uh, you know uh, the attacker physically can enter into the place where those hardwares are installed they can you know uh, break them you know by hammer they can disconnect them they can uh, do anything you know phys any physical uh, you know damage to them then called for software you know on top of hardware since run on hardware right so, so uh, they can attack the softwares hmm? like uh, if the softwares are having some bugs like you know in previous in history we find many times uh, many operating system had bugs which was you know exploited uh, so they were many so of they use the software uh, then they can, okay then they can target the data okay so on top of software there is data okay <clears throat> so they can target the data okay they can uh, okay and then the other asset or resources which includes you know people using data software hardware okay so all these things are there so there it can be the threats can be um, divided into four part first is threats on the hardware how we will protect the hardware then how we will protect the software okay the, like software can be crashed easily then how we will protect your data because on your uh, database servers the raw data is there how we will protect this data we will encrypt the data or not and all these kind of things can be there then other assets like you know how we will uh, protect or educate uh, the people who, who are working in the company they should have enough knowledge of uh, all this uh, security otherwise they can be vulnerability for uh, the organization okay so <clears throat> they can uh, copy the data in their personal mobile phone or uh, they can uh, take uh, the data out to their home and from there it can be stolen okay so all these things are comes there then next threats you can see here cia is here okay availability confidentiality and integrity cia and with all these prospects so what i told hardware software data communication lines and networks right so how you know they are related see hardware availability if you see equipment is stolen or disabled okay that's denying services it can happen so if somebody switched off the hardware it can uh, stop the you know it can create a big availability issue okay then confidentiality an unencrypted uh, cd rom or dvd is stolen from the company say and if the data which is written on those uh, cd rom are not encrypted then it can be easily you know lose the confidentiality then software programs are deleted you know delaying access to user okay so it will create unavailability then confidentiality unauthorized copy of software is made okay that can be lose the confidentiality of the software then integrity a working program is modified either to cause its fail during execution or to cause it to do some unintended task okay so that will hamper the integrity of the software system then data how is that related denying access to users so it will hamper the availability then unauthorized read of data is performed so that is uh, that uh, is something lose the confidentiality of the data then an analysis of statistical data reveals underlying data so like sometimes it happens right uh, you know by doing statistical analysis of the result you can uh, the attacker can predict what was the original data okay so that also can you know do Um, lose the confidentiality. If some in, in case of many weak encryption techniques, I will show you by doing statistical analysis you, from the cipher text, you can get back the original uh, text. Okay, so they all these things comes here. Then existing files are modified or new files are being are fabricated. Okay, so this hampers the integrity of the data. 
then communication lines and network if you see messages are destroyed or deleted from the communication line itself okay communication lines or networks are uh, rendered unavailable so that can also uh, hamper the availability then confidentially mess confidentiality messages are read the traffic pattern of the message is observed uh, so this can lose the uh, effect uh, you can say the confidentiality the messages are modified delayed rendered or duplicated or false messages are fabricated so this is what hampers the integrity over the channel or communication lines right so these are the thing next is uh, i think uh, from here i should uh, discuss in the next class right because it is going to you know be a long discussion you know <coughs> are attacks like you know some sniffer can be added uh, <coughs> some uh, log logger can be added which can be which can read all the communication and whatever people are typing on their system and uh, okay so all this uh, will and uh, yeah, removing a hardware it can be some secure hardware can be removed and that can be you know sometime big uh, remains unwatched by the security team so in, the, in this way the hard you know removing or adding some hardware can lead lead to some uh, attacks so examples are like uh, snooping and uh, right tapping so right uh, what i have told you there is uh, like you know key loggers hardware key loggers what it does it is a small device can be connected to any desktop or uh, you know wherever is somebody is using a wired keyboard so with that even uh, it can be you know <coughs> wireless keyboard also it can be added that it can be read that uh, whatever the things are typed by the you know, computer owner so snoop equal to to look around a place secure it secretly in order to discover things about it or the people connected with it okay so this is a definition of snoop from cambridge dictionary of american english okay so you can understand that um, snooping is nothing but you know um, just uh, collecting information or secretly you know uh, hiding somewhere to collect information about the physical uh, things okay then uh, it can lead to modification alteration of the of a system another kind of thing can happen that is physical attack on hardware that you know, need physical uh, security but most of the time when we discuss about information security you know we overlook the need of physical security even uh, you know most of the organization they overlook the need of physical security like you know um, the access to the server room network devices and you know, many time you will find that you know people are uh, neglect uh, neglect all these things right even uh, you know in offices and uh, buildings there are open uh, rj45 ports so those network ports can also be used to you know do some or launch some attack uh, from inside the premises okay so locks and guards are needed to you know protect the minimum you know amount of physical attack then additional uh, Sorry, accidental, accidental or vulnerable, uh, voluntary, like you know, bombing a computer room or all these things can happen. So this is uh, you know, rarely happens, but it can also happen. And uh, these are um, uh, there are probability. You know, um, like in previous, we have seen in news uh, that uh, you know somebody got failed in the exam and uh, uh, added fire to the school's uh, office right so if you imagine that that happens to that, that is cool and uh, there was a server room also in that premises so where you know that uh, you know fire was added by the failed students so you know, this kind of examples are there and the physical attacks can happen okay then trapped or 
and destruction like you know damage the machine so we can understand that uh, it can happen like you know spilled coffee on the machine or you know mice and, uh, and the, some real bugs can be introduced okay then steal the machines and you know, somebody can steal the physical machine itself okay then mm, mechania uh, mm, mechanicide attacks like you know using some axe or a hammer uh the machine you know to destroy the machine okay so these are things then physical security has uh, three important component like access control that means in that premises where uh, the network devices and servers are there who can access those uh, you know area and then cyber uh, surveillance that means it can be uh, there can be a surveillance system using what it can be monitored and time to time testing the area that whether there is some change or some unwanted hardware uh, you know <coughs> or some thing is removed or added all these things can be test a time to time basis okay and then example of spoofing uh, there is some uh, example you know called uh, wire driving or working and wire chucking so what are these things basically they are mostly related to you know wi-fi networks and as you know that uh, wi-fi access points what we use in our homes they are quite vulnerable and there are many there are many ways to uh, you know uh, attack them and uh, you know using the uh, others using others uh, wi-fi network uh, wireless network illegally or you know, doing some uh, malicious things mm. so wire driving or wire working is uh, you know working around with a wireless enabled you know notebook looking for unsecured wireless lands so it happens you will find that in your uh, you know, um, uh, colleges and you know where there is uh, wireless access you know people uh, used to um, get access to the wireless network uh, wireless network you know illegally okay then wire chucking is using chalk marking to show the presence and vulnerabilities of wireless networks um, nearby so <clears throat> this is another way the um, attackers follows uh, the chalk marks that whether uh, there is some wireless network and it has some vulnerability okay so it can be you know tested using many ways uh, like you know what wireless device are they using you know many times you will find that the wireless access point name is not changed mm -hmm. so somebody is using a cp link and with some model you will find the wireless access point name is easily visible uh, to anybody so if it is visible that device name is visible and model number is visible then immediately mm, the attacker can understand what are the vulnerabilities related to this device okay and uh, they can use them then software level vulnerabilities are threats so like you know software deletion first thing so easy to delete and anybody can get access of a system and delete some software okay it can be by mistake also okay to prevent this use configuration management software that means you know whenever somebody will try to install some software or delete some software uh, this configuration management software will ask for credential or authenticate them themselves like uh, you will find that on linux system it is quite good you know every time you are going to you know install some software or uninstall some software it will ask for credential but uh, if you see on the windows system and it if it is uh, once logged in uh, you can you know install and uninstall anything on the system okay so uh, these are a uh, kind of vulnerabilities then uh, software modification right so somebody can add trojan horses viruses logic bomb trap doors you know information leaks mm, all these things uh, you know to the system you know if they get access to it uh, and uh, these are you know, trojan horses mostly works with uh, some software okay many viruses are there you know which uh, you know gets executed with help of some uh, good software or you can say which uh, utility some utility software okay so you know, this kind of modification can happen then <coughs> software threat like you know 
unauthorized copying of the software and uh, you know via p2p etc so um, um, it can happen that somebody have purchased a software licensed copy and that license can be uh, copied by you know some uh, illegal user and they can use with their name so many times uh, you know we will find uh, that shared windows official license are being you know, sold in very low, low cost so what can be what can happen with this if you if somebody is using it can happen that uh, some software license is being sold to multiple users and when they are logging in they are logging into the same account and uh, you know who is the distributor of the key they, he can con see data of uh, everybody's account whoever is using it okay so that can be a big vulnerability then types of uh, malicious code first one is called bacterium okay a specialized form of virus which does not attach to a specific file okay uh, uses obscure so this is very small viruses you can understand and as i had uh, already told you in the previous slide the virus is used to execute it or get executed when it is uh, when it is uh, uh, attached with some file but uh, there can be very small viruses bacterium which does not need to be attached to some uh, file and they can themselves uh, execute okay then the uh, other th kind of thing is there that is called logic bomb so this is another kind of uh, you know small uh, malicious program which uh, gets activated after a certain time it can be you know some logic bomb can be you know uh, um, copied or can be installed on some uh, computer system say so today and uh, it is uh, just uh, logic is said that after 100 day from the installation day after 100 day it will be activated automatically and it will do some malicious operation on the system okay or it can be happen that after uh, how many clicks or how many uh, restart of the machine this uh, malicious logic will be executed okay so this is what is called logic bomb then trapdoor so it is basically hidden flow known for an known to an in, intruder like you know, many times it happens uh, when you know new softwares are being installed and published and you know, there can be some trapdoor and with the software and using that the attacker easily can attack or intrude into someone's machine and copy data or do some analysis activity right so or a hidden uh, computer mechanism usually software installed by an intruder who can activate the trapdoor to gain access to the computer without being blocked by security services or mechanism so it can happen that um, this logic bomb uh, sorry the trap trapdoor is um, you know intentionally installed on some uh, system so if you think uh, some you know legal trapdoor will install like uh, you know uh, there is a software called putty okay so what why do we use putty uh, if you want to access a linux machine from a um, you know windows machine and uh, basically through ftp then this putty software can, can help you if you if you install putty on a linux system and configure it there and you keep the key with you okay and after that anytime you know if the system is online you can log in uh, remotely you know using ftp and uh, you can change file copy file and uh, you can do many things okay so such kind of uh, the, so the putty is a kind of you know very known software and the utility software kind of thing i should say this is not a malicious uh, this is not considered as malicious but uh, you know similar software can be there with uh, some other name and some attacker may install it uh, you know and uh, the owner of the system may not know about the fact that there is some you know malicious software installed okay then another kind of uh, thing is there called trojan horse so i think many of you know the story of trojan horse from the where this uh, uh, name is coming right 
so i'm forgetting the name of the movie it, it was a real fact right uh, that uh, one horse was gifted uh, to the i think it was in troy or somewhere um, uh, the one horse was gifted uh, as you know as a horse statue was gifted to the king because it was very hard to you know enter into his palace uh, from outside by doing some attack you know with a small um, you know soldier troop so one uh, horse statue was gifted and in the statue there was you know the soldiers was you know um, hidden and uh, when the statue was accepted by the king uh, in the night the soldier was uh, came out of the statue and uh, you know uh, launched the attack from the inside of the palace okay so that story you all know so the same thing happens uh, with uh, computer system and programs uh, sometimes when, whenever we need uh, some whenever we need some uh, an utility software a small software so we don't think about purchasing it like you know simple uh, pdf uh, splitter or pdf breaker um, or uh, join uh, pdf joiner all these things right this kind of softwares are very small softwares or uh, what do pdf uh, uh, PDF to Word, all these things are there, which are very small softwares, and we never think about purchasing of those small softwares. And uh, used to people used to download them from the you know internet wherever they get uh, you know. But the thing is that um, these softwares are looks like okay, this is a free and works good, but it can happen with this free software. Some Trojan horse kind of thing is added in the code. And we are thinking that, okay, we are uh, installing some one MB or two MB small software, but uh, that software can bring or, or install some malicious code as well with it. Okay, and which can later lead to some attack on your system. Okay, so a computer program that appear to have a uh, useful function, but also has hidden and potentially malicious function that uh, evade security mechanisms sometimes by exploiting legitimate authentications uh, sorry authorizations of a system entity that invokes the programs okay then comes virus so it is a hidden self replicating so, uh, this is the big reason why this is called virus because it is a self uh, replic replicating so it can copy itself in the other system okay and section of uh, computer uh, software usually malicious logic that propagate by infecting okay uh, or inserting a copy of itself onto uh, or by becoming a part of another program so how virus comes virus always need a carrier okay so viruses are uh, uh, an malicious code which uh, you know um, carried to some system by some other program okay or program file so you have downloaded some pdf maybe in the uh, pdf some virus code is embedded when you will double click on the pdf okay pdf will open at the same time the virus can be installed on the system okay so the virus cannot run by itself it requires that its host program to be run to make the virus active so you know once some virus is uh, there with some file whenever you will click or you will run that program that virus will also get executed and also um, you know infect the similar kind of uh, files there in the system okay so this is what uh, known as virus and then comes worms so worms are you know similar kind of things like virus okay but the uh, thing is that uh, worms does not need this host program to you know, transmit itself from one machine to another machine it can transmit itself over the network or you can say through mail through some you know file or even pen drive you know by itself okay so the code is uh, written like uh, that but whenever uh, say somebody is attaching some file to uh, email it will also going to be attached itself okay when you are copying some file from or you are attaching a pen drive to your system and if there is a worm the worm can automatically detect the pen drive and copy itself to the pen drive 
uh, and it will get propagated and uh, that something can happen on the network when you, where you uh, connect with some other system over the network it can propagate to the other system by detecting okay uh, the, this system is connected uh, by network to some other uh, system okay it can propagate a complete working version of itself onto other host on a network and may consume computer resources and resources dest uh, destructively okay so this is what called war and more types of uh, malicious codes are exist there but uh, i don't know mm, it is in quite endless uh, you know uh, last time i had done a survey on this and uh, more than 100 you know malicious uh, code we had listed okay so then data level of vulnerability is a threat so how valuable is your data okay because uh, based on that we will you know, apply the protection or we will think about protecting them right because uh, you can understand that uh, there is different kind of data on your systems or uh, on anybody's systems okay and not all the data needs uh, enough security like you know some open you have downloaded some open domain information some pdfs okay so which uh, have some advertisement okay so that pdf is already on the open domain so you don't need to give extra security or pro protection for that file even that file can, is going to be lost or it is going to be deleted you can again download it but uh, there are you know some personal information like you know your uh, phone backup you have kept on your system that needs a special security because if you don't secure it if it is got infected by some virus or some malware we are going to lose it and if you know some malware is there which can transmit those personal information to some other malicious user then uh, you know your personal information is going to be disclosed to others okay so that in that case you need security so how valuable is your data that is important like you know here you can see something some are listed here like credit card information okay versus your you know home phone number so you can understand that credit card information is more uh, you know uh, confidential than your home phone number right then <clears throat> secure code visible data versus context okay like you know uh, so this is a visible data two three four five uh, so if only this much is there uh, it is very hard for people to understand that what is it right what is it but if it is there written that uh, phone extension extension or part of ssn number then it becomes again you know it becomes again a, a confidential data so you know i can suggest you something as a good practice whenever you will uh, you know keep your confidential data in some files sometimes many times it happens you store your uh, other card number bank account number or even an atm pin passwords in some file it happens it is quite common with people but uh, i i must tell you say you are uh, keeping your username and password in a file set so never keep username and password in the same file. You, if it is really need to be written on some uh, computer file, you should break them out and you should keep them in separate file and separate location. So that if uh, somebody is going to uh, get access to one file or even both the file, they should not be able to understand what is it, right? So this kind of things are there. This is called visible data and context data. So you should not uh you know allow the context to be revealed because you know context most of the people can uh, remember but uh, you know if context is available with uh, attacker then they can understand you know what the data is regarding okay then ad adequate protection uh, okay <clears throat> so uh, the minimum protection what i have told you that uh, like you know uh, username password you split them and keep them in uh, multiple files but better if you can encrypt them you use cryptography techniques to encrypt those files and keep on your system so i will uh, teach you different encryption technique you can implement one of them encryption technique for yourself okay and uh, keep the code with you as make a very small software 
where you can put you know give your file as input and it will give you the encrypted output right so that you know, anybody will not be able to understand uh, you know or even uh, get access to your system will not be able to see what are your password and confidential data right and even uh, you know uh, on uh, many you know word processing softwares like mso word and others there are this protection option you can protect your information on the in these files by giving a password so that what the, uh, does happens the using your password that file got encrypted okay so okay so this is uh, you know this uh, available things can be used by the general users okay but uh, as you are studying information security you can develop your own okay <clears throat> then good if uh, interactable for long time right <clears throat> then uh, threat of identity threat uh, threat of identity threat right so many times uh, there is a, a threat uh, to you know uh, identity threat identity threat may includes many things uh, like you know your uh, username password your credentials and all comes under your identity then they can be stolen okay so here you can see some uh, survey is given okay you can see uh, stolen personal identity information you will see here so this is a uh, you know survey from us okay 2016 okay so in 2016 you can see the loss due to identity threat okay the protecting you uh, protecting you and your uh, customers is more important than ever before here you look at the fraud uh, stare at the quickly refining <coughs> their tactics to um, defraud business and uh, consumers okay so you can see the amount 16.8 billion dollar then you know stolen personal information in 2017 you can see um, the amount of loss is uh, sorry per person is 290 dollar okay per person's data okay and uh, to resolve the case you know it was uh, needed almost uh, 10 million hours okay <clears throat> so there is uh, many uh, you know here are many examples of uh, identity threats okay then vulnerability threats at other exposure points like network vulnerabilities are threat you know, most of the times who are not network engineers or don't understand network they don't think about there can be some vulnerabilities on the network as well and they can be you know they can be face some attacks due to misconfiguration or insecure network so Networks multiply vulnerabilities and threats due to their complexity, easier to make design, implementation, okay, uses mistake, okay, and bringing close physically distance attacks, okay. And then wireless or sub networks or other, um, you know, um, point which makes then, you know, network based attacks more easier, okay. Then access vulnerabilities and threat you can see you know staling the cycle that means the you know what can i say the session key can be stolen and somebody some attack or a malicious user can enter the session okay then uh, bandwidth can be threat so uh, somebody is paying for the bandwidth and some other person can use it okay so you, you can understand you can see uh, there was a case in india that uh, some of the student was uh, started a startup using their institute internet okay so that was uh, you know even uh, kind of uh, you can say illegal because the institute internets are mostly given for the academic purpose not uh, run for run a company okay <clears throat> then mal malicious uh, physical access denial of access to legitimate uh, users then <coughs> People vulnerabilities and threat the most important thing and always overlooked. Okay? Crucial weak points in the security are the people or employees in the 
um, organization. So to open the weakest link in the security chain. <coughs> Honest insiders subjected to skillful social engineering, okay, and uh, disgruntled uh, employees. So what happens, you know, even there is an honest employee in the um, you know, organization and that he can be fallen into the trap of uh, social engineering, right? So social engineering means what uh, somebody can just uh, come too closer to that uh, employee, you know, become friend and, um, you know, um, gain the certain amount of trust. After that, uh, they can uh, just, uh, you know, get all the information about that person and by you know using those information they can guess what can be his username what can be his password and all okay like you will find uh, in real life that many of your friends around you can guess your password or guess your pattern on the mobile phone screen lock and all okay so they, they, these are basically part of social engineering okay then attack needs M O M, okay. Method, opportunity, and motive. So, if there is an attack, there there must be some attacking method. There must be some opportunity and some motive behind it. Okay. So, method includes skill, knowledge, tools, etc. Okay. With which to pull off an attack. Attack. Okay. And then, opportunity time and access to accomplish an attack so the attacker needs some opportunity okay when they can uh, you know uh, accomplish an attack and then attacker must have some motive like uh, reason to perform attack so why should some attacker will perform an attack so they need some motive also okay <clears throat> then types of attackers so you can uh, roughly classify them uh, based on uh, their, you know, you can say uh, activity in three, or you can say amount of knowledge. You can uh, classify them in three. First one is amateurs. So basically these people are opportunistic attackers and use a password they found okay so they these amateur attackers they, you know, usually does not have a huge knowledge of attacks or they rarely have uh, you know some uh, ability to find real vulnerability and you know launch attacks okay they are opportunistic like they can you know uh, uh, find someone someone's password reveal someone's password username and try to do some malicious thing from their account right then Script kiddies are there. That means uh, some small script they can write, you know, to copy files from one system to another system, and uh, uh, you know, um, and just delete data from one system, and all these kind of things they can do. Then there are hackers who are non-malicious. Used to call, we used to call them as uh, white hat, right? White hat hackers. So, uh, in broad and beyond security community, also uh, they can be malicious, and uh, that uh, malicious people are called what? Black hat, right? Then crackers are basically malicious people. Then career criminals are there. So basically, they are the criminal, and uh, they you know gain money you know illegally by doing cyber frauds and attacks. Then state supported spies and information warriors so there are always uh, you know so it is claimed that uh, states or countries you can say governments uh, support some spies to get information from the opponent countries and uh, say from wherever they want to you know get information or, or do some spying online okay. <laughs> then there is a classification two, which is uh, again uh, uh, divide the attackers into three parts. Then recreational hackers in, are the you know hackers who are in kind of institutional hackers. 
uh, then comes organized criminals or industrial spies or terrorists, uh, then national intelligence gatherer or information warrior. Okay. This is another classification of attackers. Okay. Then hacking as a social protest, or we call it as hacktivism, right? We call it as hacktivism. Uh, some of the example you can see here, like, you know, electro hippies, then this event was quite popular. You can Google it. Then DDoS attack on government agencies. Uh, again, you can, if you Google it, you will find, you know, many news uh, over the world where DDoS attack was uh, launched on government agencies uh, to you know, show some protest. Okay. Then spam attack as a... Uh, retaliation so you will find that uh, to protest against something you will find that uh, a certain group of people are uh, sending spam messages on the social media or you know uh, through email or some other you know cyber media okay so all these kind of uh, things are also called as uh, called as hacktivism okay or comes under hacktivism okay now here you can see the time you know, versus the technical knowledge need to do some attack, a different kind of attack. If you see password guessing, technical knowledge need is very low. You know, time is also need very low. Okay? okay, most of the time it happens if it is general people, okay, without uh, having enough uh, knowledge of why password need to be complex and all. You can guess their password within few minutes. Okay, then password cracking. Then comes self-replicating code, backdoors. Okay, all these things are quite you know possible with limited knowledge and time. But if you see session hijacking or different kind of hijacking, sniffers, sniffers, launch a DDoS attack and stealth. Uh, Diagnostics, then packet forging and spoofing, uh, new and different new internet attacks. So they needs you know high amount of uh, you know knowledge and time. Okay, so with this you can see the sophistication of uh, hackers' tools are increasing, right? And you can see here uh, the technical knowledge required are uh, decreasing with the red line. Then react to an exploit. So if there is some exploit, how to react, right? Exploit is basically successful attack. There can be, you know, the exploit can be report to vendor first, right? They say you are using a particular operating system and uh, if you uh, think that the exploitation is uh, happened due to some flaws in the operating system, then you can uh, inform the vendor first, or uh, you know any any software is uh, you know um, hacked. You can the corresponding vendor can be uh, reported. Then report it to the public. Why? So that uh, others will not be fall into the same attack. Okay. What will be the public relation effects if you do or don't? Yeah. This is another important thing. People always think before. And reporting attacks in probably public domain. So if it is a e-commerce company and they faced some attack or some bank, they got some attack. So will they put it on the public domain? If, you know, most of the time they will think a thousand time because as soon as they will put it on the public domain, uh, their users will be scared that okay, what will happen to them because their data was also there with those e-commerce companies and uh, you know uh, banks. Okay. So there is uh, some question or less some question. Then include source code, not include source code. Okay. Like when uh, some attack happened, when, when, you repeat, when people are reporting it, whether they will include the source code or not include the source code, it is always a matter of uh, dependency. Okay. Then uh, you can see at that topic I was telling you the point. Uh, to report or not to report, it is all as a matter of concern. So tension between personal privacy and public privacy. So 
and information technology company will typically uh, lose between 10 and 100 times more money than you know shaken consumer confidence uh, than the hack attack itself uh, represent if they decide to uh, prosecute the case so what happens this means if you see say there is a software company okay the x y z okay it was faced some attack okay now this attacker uh, may be say by doing this attack successful attack the attacker have uh, make a loss to this company uh, say 10 million dollar okay now if this company disclose it if it thinks about disclose then what will happen it is a software company technology uh, you can see information technology company and uh, if this attack is going to be disclosed all its uh, customers will think oh this is a tech uh, you know information technology company they can't protect themselves from an attack then oh, how they will protect us okay so <clears throat> so this disclosure can lead to another you know 10 to 100 times of the loss it have suffered by the attack so it can be 10 to 100 times into this 10 million dollar due to this disclosure can happen understand so this is uh, the situation right now why you know people always think whether it to report or not to report okay then uh, further uh, reluctance to report uh, there is you know uh, next thing comes uh, the reluctance in the report the people uh, you know most of the times uh, uh, people get uh, re you know, very reluctant when times comes to report some cyber attack okay they think okay whatever loss we have faced is we have faced so why should we report because it will again uh, you know bring some additional cost of reporting and uh, if they report it can be a case and then again they have to hire some lawyer and in the end it is uh, maybe the attacker will get some punishment but they are not going to get their you know fame back right the trust in the customer they will lose by reporting uh, you know getting that back is uh, you know very hard okay so one common fear is that a crucial piece of uh, equipment like uh, you know, main server say uh, might be impounded for evidence by overzealous investigators okay and thereby starting the company down so it can happen that uh, you know the investigator is a uh, kind of overzealous and they can again you know they can again um, and as make some damage or some misconfiguration to the main server and due to that the company also go down so that they, there is huge uh, risks is uh, you know associated to it the, the investigation team will come and they will take copy of the whole you know system of the company and company will never uh, you know um, like to uh, that like to um, you know make that happen okay then estimate fewer than one in ten serious intrusion intrusions are ever reported to the authorities okay so there's it is saying that less than one out of 10 serious intrusion that means serious attacks are being reported to the authorities <clears throat> okay then controls against against attacks so just a minute let me see how much uh, time and how much slide is remaining in this otherwise we can you know we can continue from here in the next class